The capture of Damascus occurred on 1 October 1918 after the capture of Haifa and the victory at the Battle of Samarq which opened the way for the pursuit north from the Sea of Galilee and the third Transjordan attack which opened the way to Dira, and the inland pursuit, after the decisive Egyptian expeditionary force victory at the Battle of Megiddo during the Sinai and Palestine campaign of World War I. Damascus was captured when Desert Mounted Corps and Prince Faisal's Sheriff Isle Hajar's army encircled the city, after a cavalry pursuit northwards along the two main roads to Damascus. During the pursuit to Damascus, many rearguards established by remnants of the Ottoman 4th, 7th and 8th armies were attacked and captured by Prince Faisal's Sheriff Isle Army, Desert Mounted Corps Australian Mounted Division the 4th and the 5th Cavalry Divisions. The important tactical success of capturing Damascus resulted in political manoeuvring by representatives from France, Britain and Prince Faisal's force. Following the victories at the Battle of Sharon and Battle of Nablus during the Battle of Megiddo, on 25 September, the combined attacks by the 21st Corps, Desert Mounted Corps, the 20th Corps supported by extensive aerial bombing attacks, gained all objectives. The Ottoman 7th and 8th armies in the Judean hills were forced by the attacks at Tulkarm, and Tabsa to disengage and retreat, in turn forcing the 4th Army, east of the Jordan River to avoid outflanking by retreating from Amman when they were attacked by Chaita's force. As a consequence of these withdrawals large numbers of prisoners were captured at Jenin while the surviving columns retreated behind a strong rearguard at Samak. The commander of the Egyptian expeditionary force, General Edmund Allenby ordered Lieutenant General Harry Chevelle's Desert Mounted Corps to pursue the remnants of the three Ottoman armies and capture Damascus. The 4th Cavalry Division began the pursuit, attacking rearguards along the inland road at Erbid on 26 September, at Urimta and Prince Faisal's Sheriff Isle Army captured Dira on 27 September. The Australian Mounted Division attacked rearguards along the main road, at Gisa Benet Yacoub on 27 September, occupying Kinetra the next day, at Sasa on 29-30 September, and at Kaukab and the Barada Gorge on 30 September, while the 5th Cavalry Division also attacked a rearguard at Kiswa the same day. Following these successful attacks and advances the 3rd Light Horse Brigade was ordered to move north of Damascus, marching through the city on the morning of 1 October to continue their attack on the retreating columns cutting the road to Homs. Chapter 1 – Background With the British Empire forces having gained all objectives during the battles of Sharon and Nablus, breaking the Ottoman front line and the extensive flank attacks by infantry divisions which continued while the cavalry divisions rode many miles to encircle, they destroyed two Ottoman armies west of the Jordan River with a third Ottoman army in full retreat, many of whom were forced to march after the Sheriff Isle army cut the Hajar's railway, while half its strength was captured by Chaita's force. The Yildirim army group had also lost most of their transport and guns, while the EF advances further strained their administrative and transport services. At Legion on the 22nd of September, Allenby outlined his plans to Chevelle for an advance to Damascus. Before this could be achieved, though, Haifa and important logistics nodes had to be captured. Additionally, the 4th Army still held Amman and the rearguard was still in place at Samak, nevertheless, on 26 September, the Inspector General lines of communication took control of all the captured territory up to a line stretching from Gisa Ed Damier on the Jordan River to Nar el Falik on the Mediterranean Sea. The same day detachments from the 20 and 21 Corps had moved north to take over garrison duties in the Estrelon Plain, at Nazareth and at Samak, from Desert Mounted Corps and transport from the 21st Corps, was placed at their disposal. Chapter 2 – Prelude Chapter 2 Section 1 – Lehman von Sanders withdraws While Otto Lehman von Sanders was out of contact until late in the afternoon of 20 September, following his hasty retreat from Nazareth in the early hours of the morning, the 4th Army, still without orders stood firm. Lehman continued his journey via Tiberias and Samak where he ordered a rearguard late in the afternoon, arriving at Dira on the morning of 21 September, on his way to Damascus. Here he ordered the Urbid to Dira line established and received a report from the 4th Army, 
which he ordered to withdraw without waiting for the Southern Hager's troops to strengthen the new defensive line. Lehman von Sanders had found Dira fairly secure due to the actions of its commandant, Major Wilmer, whom he placed in temporary command of the new front line from Dira to Sama. While at Dira during the evening of 21 September, Lehman von Sanders met leaders of several thousand Druzes, who agreed to remain neutral. He arrived at Damascus on the evening of 23 September, his staff having already arrived. Here, he requested the Second Army which was garrisoning northern Syria to advance to the defense of Damascus. Two days later, on 25 September Lehman von Sanders ordered his staff back to Aleppo. Chapter 2 Section 1 Subsection 2 Yildirim Army Group Retreats Between 6,000 and 7,000 German, and Ottoman soldiers remaining from the Ottoman 4th, 7th and 8th armies had managed to retreat via Tiberias or Dira towards Damascus, before these places were captured on 25 and 27 September, respectively and were at or north of Musarib. On 26 September Colonel von Oppen, commander of the Asia Corps reached Dira with 700 men including the 205th Pioneer Company. Lehman von Sanders ordered von Oppen to withdraw by train, Asia Corps left Dira at 5.30 on 27 September hours before Sheriff Eile regulars captured the town. Von Oppen's train was delayed nine hours by a break in the line 500 yards long 30 miles north of Dira, to arrive at Damascus the following morning 28 September. Asia Corps was ordered to continue on by train to Ryuk where von Oppen's corps was to strengthen a defensive line. Chapter 2 Section 2 Allenby's plans and preparations. After his initial meeting with Chevelle at Legion on the 22nd of September regarding the proposed pursuit, Allenby replied on the 25th of September to the Chief of the Imperial General Staff regarding pressure for an advance to Aleppo. In his reply, Allenby advocated for an advance by stages, as had previously been undertaken. He added that this approach would be necessary until the War Cabinet is prepared to undertake a combined naval and military operation on a large scale at Alexandretta, and to maintain by sea the military forces employed in it. A conference at Jenin on 25 September with GHQ and Desert Mounted Corps staffs, was followed the next day by a Corps Commander's meeting chaired by Allenby and orders for the pursuit were issued on 27 September. Allenby outlined his planned advance to Damascus to Wilson on 25 September. The first stage to the line, Damascus-Beirut was to begin shortly. While an infantry division marched up the coast from Haifa to Beirut, three divisions of the Desert Mounted Corps would advance on Damascus. The 4th Division which had captured Amman was to remain to capture the retreating 4th Army units from Amman. Allenby planned for Chaita's force to rejoin the Desert Mounted Corps at Damascus. The 7th Division did not leave Haifa until the day Damascus was captured, on 1 October. The leading troops reached Beirut on 8 October. With Major General H. J. McAndrew's 5th Cavalry Division following, Major General H. W. Hodgson's Australian Mounted Division was ordered to advance to Damascus 90 miles away, travelling along the west coast of the Sea of Galilee and round its northern end, across the upper Jordan River to the south of Lake Hulle, through Kinetra and across the Haran and on to Damascus. Major General G. De S. Barrow's 4th Cavalry Division was ordered to ride north from Basin and cross the Jordan River at Gisa el Mejami before advancing eastwards via Urbid to Dira in the hope of capturing retreating remnants of the Ottoman 4th Army. If they failed to capture the retreating columns they were to pursue them north along the ancient Pilgrims Road and the Hagers Railway to Damascus 140 miles away. The 21st Corps 3rd and 7th Divisions moved to garrison Haifa, Nazareth and Samak, the 2nd Battalion Leicestershire Regiment, 28th Brigade Division, was transported forward to Haifa in lorries with six days' supplies to relieve the 5th Cavalry Division on the morning of 25 September, the 21st Brigade Division, marched up the coast to arrive at Haifa on 27 September, the 7th Brigade Division marched north to Jenin and on to Nazareth where they detached one battalion before continuing on to Garrison Samak on 28 September. Chapter 3, Pursuit Chapter 3 Section 1, Sheriff Isle Army Capture of Dira 
The limited participation of Prince Faisal's force had been invited on 21 September, when an RAF aircraft delivered news of Allenby's successful offensive, and the destruction of the Ottoman 7th and 8th Armies, to its forward base at Osrock. The aircraft also carried instructions from Lt. Col. Alan Dorney, responsible for liaison between the EF and the Arabs, informing Prince Faisal that they had closed all escape routes, except the Yarmouk Valley, which lay east of the Jordan. The message exhorted the Arabs to attempt to cut off this route and it was made clear to Prince Faisal that his force was not to embark on any enterprise to the north, such as an advance on Damascus, without first obtaining the consent of the commander-in-chief. Allenby wrote to Prince Faisal. There is no objection to your highness entering Damascus as soon as you consider that you can do so with safety. I am sending troops to Damascus and I hope that they will arrive there in four or five days from today. I trust that your highness forces will be able to cooperate, but you should not relax your pressure in the Dira district, as it is of vital importance to cut off the Turkish forces which are retreating north from Marn, Amman and S. Volt. As the remnants of the Ottoman 4th Army retreated northward via Dira they were pursued over many waterless miles, by Arab forces which joined Faisal's force, with horrific consequences. Three-quarters of Prince Faisal's 4,000-strong force including Nuri Eshalan's camel force, were irregulars. They had made a forced march overnight on 26-27 September, crossing the railway north of Dira, and tearing up rails to arrive at Sheikh Saad 15 miles north-northwest of Dira, at dawn on 27 September. Auda Abu Tayyi captured a train and 200 prisoners at Ghazal Station, while Talal took Isra a few miles to the north. A total of 2,000 prisoners were captured between noon on 26 September and noon on 27 September, when the Anaza, an Arab tribal confederation attacked the rearguard defending Dira. Fighting in the town continued into the night. At Dira Lt. Col. T. Lawrence and Col. Nuri Bay met Barrow when the 4th Cavalry Division entered the town on 28 September, agreeing to cover the division's right flank during their pursuit north to Damascus. Chapter 3 Section 2, 4th Cavalry Division The 4th Cavalry Division began the pursuit by Desert Mounted Corps via Dira, the day before the Australian Mounted Division with the 5th Cavalry Division in reserve, began their pursuit to Damascus via Kinetra. The 4th Cavalry Division's the Central India Horse, which had been garrisoning Gisa El Mejami since 23 September, was joined there on 25 September by the remainder of the 10th Cavalry Brigade, from Basin. They were ordered to advance as quickly as possible to Urbid and Dira, and to contact Prince Faisal's Arab force. The brigade left Gisa El Mejami and crossed the Jordan River on 26 September, as the remainder of the 4th Cavalry Division left Basin for Gisa El Mejami, the 11th Cavalry Brigade in the rear of the division, arriving at Gisa El Mejami at 18.30 that day. Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 2 Urbid 26 September Late in the afternoon of 26 September the 10th Cavalry Brigade was attacked by the 4th Army's flank guard which held the country round Urbid in force. Consisting of the 4th Army's Amman garrison, according to Archibald Wavell these troops had not been heavily engaged, and Anthony Bruce argues that they were still intact as a fighting force even though, in rapid retreat. The 2nd Lancers attempted a mounted attack without reconnaissance, and without knowing the size of the defending force, the charge failed suffering severe losses, before the artillery could get into position. Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 3 Urim to the 27th of September At Urim to another strong rearguard position was captured by the 10th Brigade after what Wavell describes as considerable fighting. The 146th Regiment, commanded by Lt. Col. Freyer von Hammerstein Jesmold, had arrived at Urim to the day before the attack. This regiment, together with the 3rd Cavalry Division and 63rd Regiment etc., had made up the 4th Army's army troops. The 10th Cavalry Brigade's 1 over 1 Dorset Yeomanry, with a subsection of machine gun squadron, rode from the Urbid area at 7.15 on 27 September in the Vanguard. A British aircraft dropped a message two miles beyond the Wadi Shell Ale which reported that Urimta was clear of Ottoman force, however, 
as two troops approached the village, they were fired on at a range of 1,000 yards and 300 Ottoman, and all German troops advanced out of the village to the attack with an advanced force of 100 deployed for the attack while 200 with four machine guns advanced in support. Three troops of the Dorset Yeomanry charged and captured a group of 50 which had crossed a wadi, while the remainder of the defenders retreated back into the village, where hand-to-hand -hand fighting ensued among the houses. The Central India Horse was ordered forward in support, organized into squadron columns in extended file across the Wadi Ratum, when they sighted 150 retreating defenders. Two squadrons formed a line on a wide front and charged the scattering Ottoman soldiers who got two machine guns into action, before being attacked with the lance. Four machine guns and 60 prisoners were captured, while another four machine guns and 90 prisoners were captured not far away. The action was over by noon, when the 4th Cavalry Division headquarters, and the 11th Cavalry Brigade which had camped for the night of 26-27 September at Gisa El Medjami with the 12th Cavalry Brigade bivouacked 2.5 miles east of the Jordan River, with orders to advance at 6 o'clock to Arimta to join the 10th Cavalry Brigade arrived dot ahead of the cavalry Australian aircraft reconnoitred Damascus for the first time on 27 September, when the railway station was seen to be filled with hundreds of rolling stock. Columns of retreating troops and transport were also seen on the roads heading north towards Dira. Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 4 Dira 28 September After halting for the night at Erint, Barrow commanding the 4th Cavalry Division ordered patrols by the 10th Brigade, to establish whether Dira was defended. The brigade covered the assembly of the division at 4.30 on 28 September east of Urimta before advancing at 7 o'clock towards Dira. They reached Dira during the early morning to find it occupied by Prince Faisal's Sheriff Isle Force. Contact was made with Lawrence, who informed them that Sheriff Isle Irregulars had captured Dira the previous afternoon, and the 4th Cavalry Division entered the town. Near Dira a British airman from No. 144 Squadron, who had been a prisoner of the Ottoman Empire was liberated, having managed to escape when the train he had been on collided with another train, that had been derailed following a bombing on the railway. Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 5 Dili 29 September the 10th Cavalry Brigade remained in Dira to be kept the railway station, collect and care for the Ottoman wounded and bury their dead. They bivouacked for the night of 28-29 September in the station building while the 11th and 12th Cavalry Brigades moved out to Musarib to water. Barrow arranged with Prince Faisal's Chief Staff Officer Colonel Nuri S. said, for his Arab force to cover the 4th Cavalry Division's right flank during their pursuit to Damascus, which was to begin the next day. The 4th Cavalry Division's and de Miles' pursuit from Dira to Damascus began with Prince Faisal's Arab force commanded by the Iraqi volunteer Nuri S. said on the right flank while in the vanguard Arab irregulars harassed the Ottoman force. As they rode north they passed the bodies of about 2,000 Ottoman soldiers as well as their abandoned transport and equipment. However, the division rode west to Sheikh Miskin 13 miles northeast of Musarib at 1400 hours where it was joined by the 10th Cavalry Brigade from Dura Lesser Squadron left to protect the wounded. The division, running short of supplies moved 5 miles north to Bivouac at Dili for the night of 29-30 September. Rations carried by their divisional train had been issued at Musarib leaving 13 GS wagons carrying the last rations. Nine tons of barley as well as a small number of livestock were captured at Urbid and more goats had been requisitioned at Dira. Allenby describes the scale of his victory. My prisoners mount up. I hear, today, that 10,000, trying to break in, have surrendered to General Chater at Amman. This is probably true, but not yet verified. If true, it brings the total of prisoners to well over 60,000. I hope that my cavalry will reach Damascus tomorrow. Things are going swimmingly, too, in France and the Balkans. Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 6 Zira Kaya 30 September The Sharif of Mecca's Arabian army had seen two columns of German and Ottoman soldiers, one consisting of 5,000 retreating north of Dira, 
and the other two thousand strong was north of Musarib on the Pilgrim's Road. As the smaller column passed through Tophus they were attacked by Auda Abu Tayyib's Arab regular horsemen with irregulars, splitting up this column to be eventually engulfed by their pursuers. By the 29th of September the Arabian army was attacking the larger column, and requesting assistance from the 11th Cavalry Brigade. The 4th Cavalry Division rode out of Dili on 30 September towards Kiswa 30 miles away. The bulk of the remnant 4th Army was much closer to Damascus in two main columns, the first, consisting of the remnants of an Ottoman cavalry division and some infantry, was approaching Kiswa, 10 miles south of Damascus with the second column some miles behind, closely followed by Arab forces. Most of the division bivouacked at Zirakaya at 1630 while the 11th Cavalry Brigade reached Kiara 6 miles, further north where they saw the rearguard of the 4th Army. Arab forces requested the support from the 11th Cavalry Division in an attack on this rearguard. Attempts by the 29th Lancers to head off the Ottoman column were unsuccessful, while the Hans battery which had been sent forward in support over very bad ground, despite being outranged by their screw guns, continued firing until dark. During the night continuing attacks by Auda Abu Tayyib's force practically destroyed the larger column. Only one German battalion reached Damascus intact on 30 September. By the evening of 30 September, the 4th Cavalry Division was still 34 miles from Damascus. Chapter 3 Section 3 5th Mounted and Australian Mounted Divisions. Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 2 KFR Kana slash Kana to Tiberius. The 5th Cavalry Division was relieved by the infantry on the morning of 25 September. They subsequently departed Haifa, reaching KFR Kenna about 1700 hours on 26 September where they concentrated. The Australian Mounted Division left KFR Kenna also known as Kenna at midnight on 25 September, to reach the hill of Telmad overlooking Tiberias, at dawn on 26 September. After a short halt to water and feed, the division continued their march to El Mejdal, on the shore of the Sea of Galilee four miles north of Tiberias, arriving in the early afternoon. At Tiberias the Australian Mounted Division waited for the 5th Cavalry Division to close up and for the 4th Light Horse Brigade to rejoin from Semak, bivouacking there for the night of 26 September. While most of the division spent the afternoon resting and bathing in the Sea of Galilee, after the previous night's all-night ride, patrols were sent forward as far as Gisa Benet Yacoub. Chapter 3 Section 4, Australian Mounted Division Chapter 3 Section 4 Subsection 2 Gisa Benet Yacoub 27 September The Australian Mounted Division followed by the 5th Cavalry Division and Desert Mounted Corps Headquarters left Tiberias on 27 September to begin the pursuit to Damascus. They were held up for some hours at Gisa Benet Yacoub on the Upper Jordan, north of Lake Tiberias. Here, Lehman had ordered the Tiberias group, consisting of the survivors from the garrisons at Samarkand and Tiberias, to resist vigorously the Eve pursuit by establishing rearguards, south of Lake Hul. The Ottoman rearguard blew up the bridge and established strong defences with machine guns on commanding positions on the east bank, overlooking the fords. At Gisa Benet Yacoub the river was deep and fast flowing with steep banks, making it difficult to cross without the additional problem posed by machine gun fire. The 5th Light Horse Brigade's regiment mixed to Marca de Covalieri rode across open ground to dismount and attack a section of the rearguard in buildings at the western end of the damaged bridge. During this frontal attack the French troopers suffered some loss as no artillery support was available. The remainder of the 5th Light Horse Brigade searched for a ford to the south of the bridge, eventually swimming the river in the late afternoon but were caught in rocky ground on the opposite bank where they remained until first light. Meanwhile, the 4th Light Horse Regiment successfully attacked the rearguard position overlooking the ford at El Minimum 1.5 miles south of Gisa Benet Yacoub. During the night, patrols crossed the river and the 4th Light Horse Regiment continued its advance to Ed Dora. The 3rd Light Horse Brigade advanced north along the western bank of the Jordan River to reach the southern shore of Lake Hulle, also in search of a crossing point. 
A squadron of the 10th Light Horse Regiment crossed the river at twilight and captured a strong rearguard position, capturing 50 prisoners and three guns. By midnight, the brigade had crossed the river and had advanced four miles to cut the Damascus Road at Deir es Serres, but the main Ottoman rearguard force had already retreated. The desert mounted corps bridging train arrived during the night in lorries, and in five hours the sappers constructed a high trestle to bridge the destroyed span. By daylight on 28 September the Australian Mounted Division was advancing up the road towards Kaniatra followed soon after by their wheeled vehicles and guns, moving over the repaired bridge. Chapter 3 Section 4 Subsection 3 Dear S. Errors 27 Slash 28 September The 3rd Light Horse Brigade was across the Jordan River by midnight, and had advanced four miles to cut the Damascus Road at Deir es Serres, where a strong rearguard was attacked and captured, but the main Ottoman rearguard force which had defended Gisa Benet Yacoub, had already withdrawn. The first Ottoman or German aircraft, seen by the 3rd Light Horse Brigade since operations began on 19 September, passed overhead at 6 o'clock on 28 September. An hour later three aircraft bombed the 8th Light Horse Regiment's bivouac, but they were chased away by four British planes. On their way to Deir S. Serres, the 11th Light Horse Regiment was bombed at 8 o'clock by two aircraft and machine gun from the air, resulting in a few casualties. The 12th Light Horse Regiment and four machine guns were ordered to march from Gisa Benet Yacoub to Deir S. Serres at 030 on 28 September. They crossed the Jordan River at 2.15 with the regiment mixed to Marca de Covalieri, to capture 22 prisoners, three field guns and one machine gun. At Deir S. Serres the regiment mixed to Marca de Covalieri which had been attached, to the 4th Light Horse Brigade reverted to the 5th Light Horse Brigade and the 4th Light Horse Regiment, which had been attached, to the 5th Light Horse Brigade since Lujin returned to the 4th Light Horse Brigade at 9 o'clock on 28 September. The 4th Light Horse Brigade subsequently followed the 5th Light Horse Brigade to Abu Rumet scouting wide on both flanks while one squadron of 12th Light Horse Regiment escorted divisional transport from Gisa Benet Yacoub. Chapter 3 Section 4 Subsection 4 Kaniatra 28 September The Tiberius group which had provided the rearguards defending the Jordan River south of Lake Halle, was reinforced at Kaniatra by troops from Damascus. At 6 o'clock an RAF aerial reconnaissance reported a force of about 1,200 holding the high ground around Kaniatra. By 11.40 the vanguard of the Australian Mounted Division was climbing the slopes of Tel Abu en Neda which overlooks Kaniatra on the Golan Heights, while the main body of the division had reached Tel Abu el Khanzir. At 12.50 an aircraft dropped a message that there was no traffic on the road south from Kaniatra. Equals chapter 3 section 4 subsection 5 cavalry on cavalry encounter equals. Having been sent to reconnoiter a pass, at 1300 hours the leading troops encountered a rearguard of 20 Circassian cavalry which charged the light horsemen, and called on them to surrender. Sergeant Fitzmaurice and his troop then charged with swords drawn into the Circassians, killing and wounding some and taking the remainder prisoner. No further attacks occurred before the Australian Mounted Division arrived at Kaniatra, with the 5th Cavalry Division arriving five hours later, having crossed the Jordan River. Both divisions bivouacked to the east and to the west of the village. The 4th Light Horse Brigade moved through Kaniatra at 1530 to arrive at El Mansura at 1600 hours to bivouac for the night. The 3rd Light Horse Brigade bivouacked three miles closer to Damascus near Jeeb on the main road. They had travelled 35 miles in 34 hours, the horses having been saddled the whole time except for two hours at Deir S. Serres. Equals Chapter 3 Section 4 Subsection 6 Occupation of Kaniatra Equals At the top of the watershed, Kaniatra was 40 miles from Damascus, the seat of government of a Khazar in the north of the district of Jorlan, and one of the most important Circassian towns in the region stretching from the Haran to Amman. The large Muslim colony in and around the town had been given land by the Ottoman Empire after they had been forced out of the Ottoman provinces of Kars, Batum, and Ardahan which had been annexed in 1877 by Russia. Groups of Arab and Druze were patrolling the Haran, 
ready to capture any weakly guarded convoy. As the nearest infantry were at Nazareth, 60 miles away, Chevelle appointed Brigadier General Grant commanding the 4th Light Horse Brigade, Gork lines of communication to keep order around Kinetra and protect the lines of communication. Grant commanded a strong force of four cavalry regiments to maintain order among the hostile Circassians. The 4th Light Horse Brigade headquarters and the 11th Light Horse Regiment remained at Kinetra with the Sherwood Rangers. These troops garrisoned the town and organized the lines of communication north to Damascus. The Hyderabad lancers at Jisa Benet Yacoub patrolled the region from Safed, nine miles south of Jisa Benet Yacoub, while at Deir es Seras the 15th Light Horse Regiment patrolled that region. During the afternoon, four Bristol fighters raided Damascus Aerodrome, and by the evening, an advanced aircraft base had been established at Kinetra. On 29 September, Grain requisitioned at Tiberius was distributed to units, when wheeled transport arrived. By then all the fresh meat requisitioned for the men had been consumed. In order to feed the men and horses as well as 400 prisoners, vigorous requisitioning was carried out in the occupied region. Plenty of fresh meat for the men and good clover hay for the horses was supplied daily, but very little grain was found. After requisitioning ten sheep from the inhabitants of El Mansura village, at 9.30 the 11th Light Horse Regiment relieved the 4th Light Horse Regiment day patrols on 29 September guarding the roads from Sumaka, and Hor later the Shek and Banios roads. By 30 September the 11th Light Horse Regiment was patrolling the lines of communication in the Kinetra district round the clock. No relief for any guard or piquet was possible for more than 24 hours, except for one troop, as all the men were on duty or were sick in hospital. Between 19 and 30 September the 4th Light Horse Brigade, had suffered 73 horses killed 3 light draft horses, 12 rides and 2 camels destroyed, 14 rides, 2 light draft horses wounded and 8 evacuated animal casualties. They captured 24 officers and 421 other ranks at Kinetra. Chapter 3 Section 4 Subsection 7 Advance Continues 29-30 September The force which continued the advance from Kinetra consisted of the Australian Mounted Division with the 4th and 12th Light Horse Regiments commanded by Lt. Col. M. W. J. Boucher and known as Boucher's Force, along with the 3rd and 5th Light Horse Brigades followed by the 5th Cavalry Division docked during the morning of 29 September retreating columns of German and Ottoman soldiers were seen by aerial reconnaissance in several groups with about 150 horse transports and 300 camels about 20 miles south of Damascus. About 100 more infantry and pack camels were seen on the outskirts of Damascus. Also during the morning a reconnaissance by the 11th Light Armoured Motor Battery had been attacked by a force of all arms estimated at 300 strong with machine guns and at least two guns, holding a rearguard position 20 miles from Kinetra across the road to Damascus 4 miles south of Sa'a apostrophe Sa'a. The Sasa rearguard force appeared to be divided in two, the left consisting of 50 German, 70 Ottoman soldiers, 6 machine guns and 4 guns. Chapter 3 Section 4 Subsection 8 Action at Sasa The advance to Damascus resumed during the afternoon of 29 September after canteen stores had been distributed, with the intention of marching through the night, to capture Damascus on the morning of 30 September. At 1500 hours the 3rd Light Horse Brigade moved off with the remainder of the Australian Mounted Division following at 1700 hours. As advanced guard the 9th Light Horse Regiment with six machine guns attached, pushed forward one squadron with two machine guns which encountered the strong Ottoman position. Supported by machine guns and well-sighted artillery and situated on rising ground covered with boulders, their left flank was secured by a rough lava formation. By 1900 hours the remainder of the 3rd Light Horse Brigade, seeing the advanced squadron being shelled by at least one battery, was moving forward to the right to attack the Ottoman left flank. The 10th Light Horse Regiment, was sent forward in support to attack the right flank. However, the country either side of the road was too rough for the cavalry to advance across during the night and machine gun fire swept the road. 
The strong rearguard had stopped the pursuit. While the 9th and 10th Light Horse Regiments slowly continued their advance, at 2 o'clock on 30 September, the 8th Light Horse Regiment, moving dismounted along the road, made a frontal attack on the rearguard position. With the cooperation of the 9th and 10th Light Horse Regiments, the position had been captured by 3 o'clock along with five machine guns and some German prisoners. Some managed to withdraw but they were pursued by the 10th Light Horse Regiment which captured two 77mm field guns, two machine guns and about 20 prisoners. Sergeant M. Kirkpatrick of the 2nd New Zealand Machine Gun Squadron described the action. A sharp opposition was encountered from a battery and some machine guns well posted in difficult ground, all strewn with Mount Hermann's apples. Deploying in the dark and over such ground was no easy matter, but finally the tenacious enemy was driven out and captured. During the attack on Sasa two members of the 4th Light Horse Regiment earned Distinguished Conduct Medals when they led charges at a German rearguard at Sasa. These two flank patrols of three men each attacked 122 Germans with four machine guns preparing to enfilade the Australian Mounted Division's flank scattering them and eventually forcing their surrender. Chapter 3 Section 4 Subsection 9 Kaukab the 30th of September The 3rd and 5th Light Horse Brigades and Boucher's force were ordered to continue the advance to the west of Damascus to cut the lines of retreat, west to Beirut and north to Homs. At dawn Lt. Col. M. W. J. Boucher's two regiments of the 4th Light Horse Brigade the 4th Light Horse Brigade took over as the Australian Mounted Division's advanced guard towards Damascus with the 5th Light Horse Brigade at Khan Es Sheha and the 3rd Light Horse Brigade following in reserve after reassembling after the Sasa engagement. The advance attacked a column half a mile from Kaukab, capturing 350 prisoners. A field gun and eight machine guns and 400 rifles. The regiment saw a strong column about two miles long take up a position on all the commanding places on Kaukab Ridge slash Jebel El Aswad, from the western edge of a volcanic ridge stretching eastwards along the high ground. Patrols estimated the force to be 2,500 strong, but there were no apparent signs of troops to protect their right flank. The 4th and 12th Light Horse regiments were deployed on the right while the 14th Light Horse and the Regiment Mixed de Marca de Covalieri took up a position on the left with the 3rd Light Horse Brigade in the rear. The unprotected right flank was quickly outflanked by the Regiment Mixed de Marca de Covalieri advance. As two batteries opened effective fire from a hillock, at 11.15 the 4th and 12th Light Horse Regiments charged mounted with the sword. When the 4th Light Horse Regiment on the left and the 12th Light Horse Regiment on the right, charged up the slope the Ottoman defenders broke and ran. About 72 prisoners were captured along with 12 machine guns while large numbers retreated into woods towards Dyer and the Ottoman cavalry road back to Damascus. The regiment mixed to Marca de Covalieri continued their advance riding five miles to the Banyas to Damascus road beyond Katana, and on to southwest of El Meze where they were heavily fired on by machine guns. The regiment dismounted to attack the position with one squadron of the 14th Light Horse Regiment following, slowly fighting their way along the Calabat El Meze ridge parallel to the road, until horse artillery batteries advanced up the main road at 1300 hours and commenced firing on the Ottoman position which silenced them. From Kaukab, Damascus was 10 miles away. Chapter 3 Section 5, 5th Cavalry Division Chapter 3 Section 5 Subsection 2 Kizil 30 September On 29 September Mustafa Kemal Pasha, commander of the 7th Army arrived at Kizil, with his army's leading troops. Lehman von Sanders ordered him to continue on to Ryak, north of Damascus. By the morning of 30 September, the leading column of the remnant 4th Army consisting of an Ottoman cavalry division and some infantry, was approaching Kizwa 10 miles south of Damascus, followed along the Pilgrim's Road by the 4th Cavalry Division 30 miles behind. The 5th Cavalry Division, with the Essex Battery RHA in support, was ordered to attack a 2,000 strong Ottoman column retreating along the Pilgrim's Road 9 miles to the east. Two regiments of the 14th Cavalry Brigade bypassed the 2,000 strong garrison in Kizwa in order to attack on another Ottoman 
rear guard three miles closer to Damascus. The British Indian Army 20th Deccan Horse and the 34th Pune Horse approached the road, with the hills of El Jebel El Aswad on their left. To the east of Kaukarp, their progress slowed. Here they were stopped by rear guards, while the road was heavily congested. Large numbers of retreating Ottoman soldiers could also be seen further to the north, approaching Damascus. Two squadrons of Deccan horse attacked and captured the nearest point on the hills overlooking the pass, while on their left a squadron of the 34th Puna horse supported by the Essex battery RHA charged into the German and or Ottoman force, mounted splitting it in two and scattering the column. Here they captured 40 officers and 150 men. The 14th Brigade eventually bivouacked on the El Jebel El Aswad Ridge with a total of 594 prisoners having suffered 5 killed and 4 wounded. Chapter 3 Section 6 Summation of Cavalry Advances Four days after leaving Tiberias, in spite of delays caused by the difficulty of the terrain and a series of cavalry actions in which the German and Turkish rearguards were either overrun or harried into surrender, the Australian Mounted and 5th Cavalry Divisions arrived at Damascus. They had left a day after the 4th Cavalry Division but arrived within an hour of each other. In the 12 days from 19 to 30 September, Desert Mounted Corps 3 Cavalry Divisions marched over 200 miles 400 kilometers, many riding nearly 650 kilometers, fought a number actions, and captured over 60,000 prisoners, 140 guns and 500 machine guns. In response to this feat, Chetwood subsequently wrote to Chevelle, congratulating him for his historic ride to Damascus and the performances of the cavalry in this epoch-making victory. He went on to write that Chevelle had made history with a vengeance and that his performance be talked about and quoted long after many more bloody battles in France will have been almost forgotten. Chapter 4 Damascus Chapter 4 Section 1 Approaches. According to Lieutenant Hector W. Dinning from the Australian War Records in Cairo, the last 20 miles to Damascus is good. The great green plain surrounding Damascus can be seen from an immense distance. Like the site of the Nile Delta, the rich green plain watered by the Abana and the Farpa is in sharp contrast to the brown rocky and desert sand country. Dinning writes, on approach you skirt the stream of the Farpa ten miles from the city. Damascus is hidden in the forest. You do not see its towers until you are upon it. But its sober suburbs you see climbing up the barren ridges of clay outside. According to the 1918 Army Handbook, Damascus, the largest urban settlement in Syria was also a Bedouin Arab city located in an oasis most of which lay east of the city. The Arab villages and tenting nomads made the environs of Damascus less safe than the desert, more likely to join in an attack on the city than to help its defense. In and around the main suburb of Salahie, on the northwestern edge are many Kurds, Algerians, and Cretan Muslims. One-fifth of those living in the city are Christians of all denominations, including Armenians, while there are also some Jews of very ancient settlement. Almost all of the remainder are Arab Muslims. The population is singularly particularist, proud, exclusive, conservative, and jealous of Western interference. Arab independence centered on Damascus is a dream for which it will fight, the town was racially diverse and both Christian and Muslim services were held in the Great Mosque. Mansell writes that one half of the building being reserved for the Christians and the other for the Mohammedans. Damascus was surrounded by most beautiful gardens, while the city has trams and electric light. Many of the buildings were constructed in the Riviera style while most of the country outside bare and stony, not unlike the frontier. Chapter 4 Section 2 Defense Lehman von Sanders ordered the 24th, 26th and 53rd Infantry Divisions, 20 Corps 7th Army and the 3rd Cavalry Division, Army Troops 4th Army, under the command of Colonel Ismet Bey to defend Damascus, while the remaining Ottoman formations were ordered to retreat northwards. The Tiberius group commanded by Jamal Pasha, commander of the 4th Army was also ordered to defend Damascus. Lehman von Sanders realized he could not defend the city and withdrew his Yildirim Army group headquarters north to Aleppo. 
During 30 September, retreating units passed through the outposts organized by Colonel von Oppen at Reich. The 146th Regiment, was the last formation to leave Damascus on 30 September. After hearing the Barada Gorge was closed von Hammerstein left Damascus by the Homs Road, following the 3rd Corps, the 24th Division and the 3rd Cavalry Division to Ryak. Chapter 4 Section 3, Encirclement Australian aircraft had reconnoitred Damascus for the first time on 27 September when they saw the railway station filled with hundreds of carriages and engines. Retreating columns and transport were also seen on the roads from Dira and north from Gisa Benet Yacoub. During the afternoon of 28 September, Damascus aerodrome was bombed and burnt, and the following morning Damascus was being evacuated. All during the 30th of September long columns of retreating Ottoman, and German soldiers had passed through Damascus. By midnight on 30 September, the Australian Mounted Division was at El Meze two miles to the west, the 5th Cavalry Division was at Kaukab and the 4th Cavalry Division was at Zirakaya 34 miles south of Damascus on the Pilgrims Road with the 11th Cavalry Brigade at Khan Dian and with the Arab forces northeast of Ashrafia. Chevelle ordered the 5th Cavalry Division to the east of Damascus. The Australian Mounted Division moved west of the city to block the road to Beirut and the road north to Homs, Hamar and Aleppo and occupy the city, while the 5th Cavalry Division moved to the south of the city to cut the road from Dira. MacAndrew's 14th Brigade, 5th Cavalry Division held the Kaukar Bridge captured by the 4th and 12th Light Horse Regiments. Barrow's 4th Cavalry Division, and an Arab force were in action against the remnant 4th Army around Khan Dianan. Arabs were reported camped at Kizil, a few miles to the south of the city. According to Sergeant M. Kirkipatrick of the 2nd New Zealand Machine Gun Squadron, German machine gunners, defending the suburbs, were quickly rooted out by our active horse artillery, while we galloped between the cultivation and the arid hills. Suddenly encountering a sharp and well directed fire, we swerved abruptly into these hills, where the enemy, picketing the heights, were as quickly dispersed. From these hills we obtained a magnificent view of the city which the Prophet thought a paradise, fortunately for his belief, he went not down, neither did the wind blow his way. Away to the southeast we could see a great converging column of the enemy struggling on to reach the city. They were the 20,000 Turks from the Dira base. Most of the fugitives were bagged by our division ere they reached what they had fondly hoped was their haven of refuge. At two o'clock on the 1st of October a troop of the Gloucester Hussars with a Hotchiss rifle section was ordered to capture the wireless station at Kadam. They were unable to capture it before it was destroyed. From the west of Kadam the troop witnessed the destruction of the wireless station and the railway station before arriving at the headquarters of the Australian Mounted Division. A half hour after the troop had set out, the remainder of the 13th Cavalry Brigade at Kaukab, advanced to Kizil arriving just before 4.30 at Diagabie mistaking it for Kizil. One squadron of Hodson's horse in the vanguard pursued and captured about 300 Ottoman soldiers before riding on into Kizil to capture another 300 prisoners. After the brigade arrived at Kizil they were ordered back to Kaukab. Having sent back 700 prisoners under escort the Hodson's horse, squadron advanced with machine guns and Hotchkiss rifles at the gallop, towards a 1,500-strong Ottoman column moving towards Damascus about three-quarters mile away assuming the rest of the 13th Cavalry Brigade would reinforce them. Artillery of the 4th Cavalry Division, following the Ottoman column up the Pilgrims Road, came to the squadron's support and enabled them to extricate themselves with the loss of one Hotchkiss gun and several horses. Chapter 4 Section 4, Damascus 1 October after the Barada Gorge was blocked retreating columns were still escaping Damascus to the north along the road to Aleppo. A large column of Ottoman troops consisting of the 146th Regiment, the last Ottoman formation to leave Damascus on 30 September, marched out of Damascus along the Homs Road to Rayak northwest of Damascus during the night. They followed the 3rd Corps, 
the 24th Division and the 3rd Cavalry Division to concentrate there together with troops on the last Ottoman train which left the city about 2100 hours on the 30th of September. Only von Oppen's force which had travelled by train to Riak before the Bada Gorge was closed and the 146th Regiment marching to Homs remained disciplined formations. Chapter 4 Section 4 Subsection 2 Surrender The independence of Syria was proclaimed and the Hajar's flag raised over the governor's palace by the Emir Said Obad el Qaeda, who formed a provisional council to rule the city until Prince Faisal took command. Hughes writes that GHQ instructed troops to allow Prince Faisal's force into the city first, even though the EF had won the battle and reached Damascus before the Arabs. The 3rd Light Horse Brigade had bivouacked outside the city the night before, having establishing picket lines to restrict entry to the city to all except Sherifian regulars. With orders to cut the Homs Road, the brigade entered Damascus at 5 o'clock on 1 October 1918. The 10th Light Horse Regiment as 3rd Light Horse Brigade advanced guard, descending a steep slope to the bottom of the Brada Gorge to arrived at the Duma station where several hundred Ottoman soldiers surrendered. At the Baramki railway station, they captured 500 to 1,000 prisoners on a train about to leave for Beirut. Having cleared away, they crossed the gorge and galloped into the city with drawn swords. As they rode through the city they passed the Baramki barracks containing thousands of soldiers who did not interfere with their movements, but the streets were filling with people who forced them to slow to a walk. At the Saray, Hall of Government or Town Hall Major or Lieutenant Colonel A. C. N. Olden, commanding the 10th Light Horse Regiment accepted the surrender of the city from Emir Said Obad El Qaeda. Olden later described the scene as a large gathering, clad in the glittering garb of Eastern officialdom, stood, formed up in rows, Emir Said told Olden he had been installed as governor the previous day and he now surrendered Damascus to the British Army. Damascus was in a state of revolt, both the civil and military administrations had completely broken down and Olden warned that the shooting must be stopped. He requested a guide to show the Australian light horsemen through the city to the Homs Road. Chapter 4 Section 4 Subsection 3 Administration Independence was declared while about 15,000 Ottoman and German soldiers were still in Damascus, including Jamal Pasha, the commander of the 4th Army. Allenby reported to King Hussein, Prince Faisal's father, on 1 October, informing him that they had entered the city and had captured over 7,000 prisoners. The Arab army arrived in Damascus at 7.30, after the 10th Light Horse Regiment had left the city, with T. Lawrence who drove into Damascus with Auda, Sharif Nasir, Nuri Shafan, Emir of the Ruwalla and their forces. They met at the town hall and declared their loyalty to King Hussein, Prince Faisal's father. The Arabs subsequently proclaimed a government under King Hussein, raising their own flag and installing an Arab governor before Allenby's troops arrived. According to Hughes, the turmoil surrounding Damascus's fall, political decision-making devolved to a small group of comparatively junior British officers operating in the field. Lawrence was part of this group. He appeared to act, on occasion, independently but he was isolated from GHQ and London. Lawrence and his colleagues had to make decisions quickly in difficult and explosive situations. Shukri Pasha was subsequently appointed military governor of Damascus. French and Arab claims which would take up a great deal of Allenby's time, were complicated by this Arab action and caused the French to distrust Prince Faisal. This first Arab administration ceased within days and Ali Reza Pasha el Rikabi took over. French and Italian officers also arrived in Damascus were French, representing the interests of their countries as well as the independent American representative with the EF, Yale, who reported feeling that he was being obstructed. Allenby reported to the War Office by telegram on 1 October, informing them that the Australian Mounted Division had entered Damascus, and that the Desert Mounted Corps and the Arab Army had occupied the town. His report concluded that the civil administration remains in the hands of the existing authorities, and all troops, with the exception of a few guards, been withdrawn from the town. According to a letter he wrote to his wife, he intended to set out to Damascus the following day, remaining there until 4 October. 
Chapter 4 Section 4 Subsection 4 Occupation At 6.40 on 1 October Hodgson, commanding Australian Mounted Division ordered Boucher's force, the 4th and 12th Light Horse Regiments to patrol the western outskirts of Damascus south of the Bada Gorge. A barracks containing 265 officers and 10,481 men surrendered to the 4th Light Horse Regiment. These prisoners were marched to a concentration camp outside the city, while 600 men who were unable to walk and 1,803 hospitals were cared for. Guards were posted on the main public buildings and consulates until they were relieved by Sheriff Isle Troops. Desert Mounted Corps had captured a total of 47,000 prisoners since operations commenced on the 19th of September. Between 26 September and the 1st of October, the Corps captured 662 officers and 19,205 other ranks. About 20,000 sick. Exhausted and disorganized Ottoman troops were taken prisoner in and around the Damascus. Nearly 12,000 prisoners were captured in Damascus before noon on 1 October 1918 as well as large numbers of artillery and machine guns. The 4th Light Horse Brigade captured a total of 11,569 prisoners in the city. The 5th Cavalry Division took charge of 12,000 Ottoman prisoners. Prisoners were walked out of Damascus to a camp. Allenby estimated that 40,000 Ottoman soldiers had been retreating towards Damascus on the 26th of September. The pursuit by Desert Mounted Corps had captured half of them. Falls writes that this great cavalry operation in effect finally decided the fortune of the campaign. The official Australian historian, Gullet, describes the scale of the victory. The great Turkish and German force in western and eastern Palestine had been destroyed, and our prisoners numbered 75,000. Of the 4th, 7th and 8th Turkish armies, south of Damascus only a few thousand foot saw, hunted men escaped. Practically every gun, the great bulk of the machine guns, nearly all the small arms, and transport, every aerodrome and its mechanical equipment and nearly every aeroplane, an intricate and widespread telephone and telegraph system, large dumps of munitions and every kind of supplies, all had, in fourteen swift and dramatic days been stripped from an enemy who for four years had resisted our efforts to smash him. It was a military overthrow so sudden and so absolute that it is perhaps without parallel in the history of war. And it is still more remarkable because it was achieved at a cost so trifling. Chapter 4 Section 5 3rd Light Horse Brigade Continue Pursuit After taking the surrender of Damascus, the 3rd Light Horse Brigade moved north along the Homs Road. They were involved in virtually continual skirmishes throughout the day, in short but severe engagements. They pursued the Ottomans, fighting several engagements on 1 October when they captured 750 prisoners and several machine guns. Meanwhile, the 13th Cavalry Brigade advanced to the east of the city to the Homs Road, where they gained touch with the 14th Cavalry Brigade which had passed through Damascus at 10.30 also through the Bab Tuma Gate to deploy outposts. The next day, at 6.15 on 2 October 1918 a long column was reported attempting to escape northwards. The 9th Light Horse Regiment trotted out at 6.45 and quickly got level with the main body of the column, Two squadrons were ordered forward to Karnayash before the entrance to a pass. As soon as they had cut the road ahead a third squadron rode to attack the flank of the column but before it could engage the column surrendered. They had captured over 2,000 prisoners including a divisional commander and the 146th Regimental Standard, the only Ottoman colour taken by Australians in the First World War. The 146th Regiment had only recently been one of two disciplined formations. Chapter 4 Section 6, Chevelle's March Through Damascus on 2 October When Chevelle arrived in Damascus, he told his staff set up camp in an orchard outside the city while he completed a reconnaissance. He dispatched a message to Lord Allenby via aircraft and also sent for the British supply officer who had been attached to the Hages forces. According to Chevelle, this officer reported that the situation in the city was chaotic and that the intention of the Hejaz was to make as little as possible of the British and make the populace think that it is the Arabs who have driven out the Turk. 
As a result, Chevelle decided to march through the city the following day, with practically every unit being represented, guns, armored cars, everything, and I also took possession of Jimmel's house. Allenby had instructed Chevelle to work through Lawrence until he arrived, but Lawrence was concerned to see Prince Faisal rule Syria, and he opposed a show of strength. Nevertheless, according to Preston, Chevelle ordered a display of force to overawe the turbulent elements in the town. Detachments from each brigade of Desert Mounted Corps and guns marched through Damascus led by Chevelle. He was joined by Barrow, the 4th Cavalry Division Commander, MacAndrew, the 5th Cavalry Division Commander and the Australian Mounted Division's Commander Hodgson, along with staff representatives, one squadron of each regiment, one battery from each division of British Territorial Royal Horse Artillery, and a section of the 2nd New Zealand Machine Gun Squadron. These troops marched through Damascus from Maidan in the south. The squadrons represented Australian Light Horse, French Chasseurs d'Afrique and Spoy, British Yeomanry, Indian Cavalry Regiments and a squadron of 2nd Light Horse Brigade which was part of the Corps Commander's Bodyguard, represented the Anzac Mounted Division commanded by Chater. The march through Damascus began at 12.30 and finished at 1500 hours with units back at the El Mezzo bivouac at 1600 hours when two troops from the squadron were assigned to protect the Australian Mounted Divisional Train. Chapter 4 Section 7, Damascus Meeting 3 October Throughout late September, Allenby, Chevelle and the British War Office shared telegrams discussing their intentions regarding the administration of Syria following the fall of Damascus. The area included strong French interests, although Britain wanted Prince Faisal to rule Syria from Damascus and his Arab force was to control the city. This would not extend into areas of French influence, although Allenby determined, that he would appoint British officers to administer areas east of the Jordan until Arab administration could be formed. In Damascus, though, he planned to maintain recognize Arab administration, and would appoint French liaison officers, while retaining overall command as commander-in-chief. Allenby arrived in Damascus at the Hotel Victoria where he met with Prince Faisal on 3 October. He told Prince Faisal to moderate his aims and await decisions from London, and explained he would control Syria but not the Lebanon which the French would control. Allenby went on to highlighted that he was in supreme command and that, as long as military operations were in progress, all administration must be under my control, while informing him that the French and British governments had agreed to recognize the belligerent status of the Arab forces fighting in Palestine and Syria, as allies against the common enemy. Prince Faisal claimed Lawrence had assured him Arabs would administer the whole of Syria, including access to the Mediterranean Sea through Lebanon so long as his forces reached northern Syria by the end of the war. He claimed to know nothing about France's claim to Lebanon. Allenby left shortly afterwards for Tiberias. Chapter 4 Section 7 Subsection 2 German Government Resigns the German government resigned on 3 October with their armies in retreat following a series of defeats. Chapter 4 Section 8, Occupation Continues The 12th Light Horse Regiment bivouacked 1,000 yards northeast of Kafasus from 1 October while a squadron remained 8 miles south of Damascus, C Squadron reported to Colonel Lawrence for guard duty in the city, and B Squadron guarded the divisional train. On 4 October the regiment took over guard duties from the 5th Cavalry Division and moved bivouac to southwest of El Mezzo. At 7 o'clock on 7 October a Taube aircraft dropped three bombs about 400 yards from regimental headquarters without causing any casualties. At 8.30 regimental headquarters and A and B squadrons moved to Damascus bivouacking at the White House 1,100 yards west of Kaysom Barracks while C squadron was bivouacked near the French hospital on Aleppo Road not far from the English hospital. Here they continued various guard duties. Allenby reported to the war office. The total of prisoners captured by the EF now exceeds 75,000, and it is estimated that of the 4th. 7th and 8th Armies and L. Of sea troops not more than 17,000 have escaped, and that only 4,000 of these are effective rifles. 
We still have at Damascus at the present moment 25,000 of these 75,000 prisoners, and owing to their state of health and our lack of motor ambulances and lorries there is difficulty in bringing them back. Owing to an outbreak of cholera at Tiberias this place, which could have formed a good stop on the journey, is not available. There are 16,000 sick and wounded still to be evacuated out of the total of prisoners. Damascus itself is tranquil, and the price of food has fallen 20% from what it was during the Turkish occupation. There is some destitution, and disease in Amman, but my medical authorities are dealing with these. Otherwise the situation in the Amman S. Salt area is satisfactory. Chapter 4 Section 8 Subsection 2 Kaukab, Prisoners of War Camp At Kaukab 10,000 prisoners in a compound, were joined by 7,000 more moved from a compound at El Meze, in deplorable condition. They died at first at 70 per day which slowed to 15 a day, under the command of Lt. Col. T. J. Todd, 10th Light Horse Regiment which took over guard on 7 October from two squadrons of 4th Light Horse Regiment and one squadron of 11th Light Horse Regiment commanded by Major Bailey. Todd Foundations poor and no provision made for cooking. No drugs, or bandages for sick and wounded of whom about 3,000 urgently required medical attention. Todd had the weakest men transferred to houses in the village, supplied blankets and Syrian doctors to treat the sick, organized the prisoners into companies under their own officers, and sanitary arrangements were developed. Four doctors among the officer prisoners began working in the compound but none spoke English. On the first day 69 dead were buried, the next day 170. On the 8th of October five Ottoman mobile cookers were received and soup cooked for the sick. Four water troughs and four pumps were erected along the stream for the prisoners of war. Daily reports sent in urgently called for blankets, drugs and disinfectant. On 9 October 762 Ottoman officers and 598 other ranks were sent to the compound while there were no evacuations to the Jordan. Two interpreters arrived on 10 October and Lt. Col. Todd appointed Commandant of Prisoners of War Damascus area. By the next day rations had become fairly satisfactory but drugs, blankets and disinfectant were urgently needed. By the 18th of October the first batch of 1,000 prisoners were evacuated by road organized into groups of 100 with their own NCOs, others followed. On 30 October Jacob's Horse reported to relieve 10th Light Horse Regiment which marched out at 1530 for Homs. Chapter 4 Section 9 supply problems. Damascus was 150 miles from the EF bases and Aleppo was 200 miles beyond Damascus. The most difficult problem caused by these great distances was the provision of food and medical comforts, because a regular supply service could not be maintained along the lines of communication. Captured ports were quickly organized as advanced bases, for supplying both Bolfin's 21 Corps and Chevelle's Desert Mounted Corps, advances. Supplies began to be landed at Haifa on 27 September with 1,000 tons landed each day during the first week of October, but the infrastructure was lacking for moving the supplies the 85 miles from Haifa to Damascus and 73 miles from Afula to Damascus, with a core depot established at Samarkand and carried in lorries on to Damascus. At the beginning of the pursuit, the supply route ran from Haifa, to Nazareth and on to Tiberias and Samarkand but by the time Desert Mounted Corps reached Damascus the Corps had outrun its supply columns. The main problems were damage to the railway from Haifa to Samak, which was repaired by 30 September, and the very bad condition of a two-mile stretch of road from Gisa Benet Yacoub, towards Kinetra. The stretch of less than a mile leading up from the crossing of the Jordan at Gisa Benet Yacoub, took on average a day to a day and a half to negotiate. It took three days by motor lorry to travel the 90 miles from Semak to Damascus. There was only one narrow and winding road, running to the southwest and crossing a narrow bridge which broke down several times and was only wide enough for one vehicle. Most of the troops were camped along this road, on the outskirts of the town, and, since it was the only route by which they and the motor supply lorries from Semak railhead could reach the town, it was frequently blocked. 
On 4 October 1918 the ration convoy broke down leaving the 12th Light Horse Regiment short two meals. From 19 October supplies and rations of tea, milk and sugar were landed at Beirut and carried on lorries to Damascus and Baalbek for the two cavalry divisions. On the 22nd of October Allenby reported. I am at work on the broken bridges in the Yarmouk Valley, and, meanwhile, bridging the gap by camels and motor lorries. As for roads, I propose to concentrate on the coast road from Haifa northwards, then Tripoli Homs Road, and then Beirut Baalbek Road. I hope to keep them passable during the rains, then, with my standard gauge railway to Haifa, and using the Turkish railway Haifa Damascus Rayak, I may keep going. The railway, N, of Rayak, is standard gauge, and sleepers are steel, so that I can't squeeze the line into the meter gauge, therefore, I fear it is useless to me, as yet. Chapter 4 Section 10, Requisitioning Desert Mounted Corps nearly 20,000 men, and horses relied heavily on local supplies from 25 September onwards until the French took over the area in 1919. Between 25 September and 14 October Desert Mounted Corps was dependent for forage on what they could requisition, fortunately, except on one or two occasions, water was plentiful. Food supplies for the troops and the 20,000 prisoners depended on requisitioning, a business demanding patience and an admixture of firmness and tact. This business was carried out without extreme difficulty, and without in any way depriving the inhabitants of essential food. Bread and meat for the men was to a large extent also supplied from local sources. Grain concealed in Damascus and sheep and cattle from the local region were requisitioned. Chapter 4 Section 11 Medical Situation At first no medical units could enter Damascus, a town of some 250,000 inhabitants, due to the turmoil and uncertain political situation. They began coming in the next day. Many of the 3,000 Ottoman sick and wounded were found in six groups of hospitals. One group of hospitals at Baptuma housed 600 patients, another group housed 400 patients, 650 seriously wounded Ottoman soldiers were found in the Merkaz hospital, about 900 were found in the Berva barrack. In a building near the Kadam railway station 1,137 cases were found. On orders from Chevel, they were made the first duty of the medical service. Although a few cholera cases were found at Tiberias and quickly eradicated, there was none at Damascus, but typhus, enteric, relapsing fever, ophthalmia, pellagra, syphilis, malaria, and influenza were found in the prisoners. Desert Mounted Corps field ambulances treated over 2,000 cases with 8,250 patients admitted to hospitals in Damascus. Evacuations were mainly by motor convoys to the nearest ports and then by hospital ships. At first all seriously ill British and Ottoman sick were held in Damascus due to the arduous 140-mile evacuation to Haifa. The journey to Haifa began in motor lorries from Damascus to Samak, but it was so fatiguing that it had to be negotiated in two stages. The first stage of 42 miles was to Kinyatra where the mobile section of the 4th Light Horse, field ambulance kept them overnight. The second stage was to Rosh Pina 4th Cavalry Division collecting station, then on to Semak where the 4th Cavalry Division receiving station put the sick on trains to Haifa, about 50 miles away. After their 140-mile journey they were cared for by a British field ambulance till a hospital ship took them to Egypt. Motor ambulances were also used, but they broke down, and supplies of petrol ran out. The supply of motor lorries was insufficient for the evacuation of sick and wounded as well as the evacuation of prisoners. There were over 10,000 prisoners in the Damascus area who put great pressure on the food supply. Downs writes that it was arranged that returning ammunition lorries, available only at very irregular intervals, should be used for the sick and wounded, and supply lorries for the prisoners of war. Along the pursuit by the Australian Mounted Division and 5th Cavalry Division, and the 4th Cavalry Division, wounded and increasing numbers of sick were held in collecting stations. They waited evacuation by returning supply motor lorries. At a monastery above the shore of the Sea of Galilee north of Tiberias, 
monks cared for sick Australians who thought they were at home, the shore for half a mile beyond a little jetty was planted with eucalyptus. They ate freshly picked bananas from a nearby grove, oranges and fresh fish. The 4th and 5th Cavalry Divisions in the Ryak Moalaka area were ordered to stop evacuations to Damascus until the Beirut Way was established. A combined clearing hospital was landed at Beirut following the occupation of the city on the 11th of October and gradually became the main evacuation route via Moalaka from Damascus, a distance of 71 miles when the Samak route wound down. According to Downs, the route between Damascus and Beirut, was considered to be of fair quality. Running westerly over the anti-Lebanon range, it then crossed a plain between the two ranges and ascends the Lebanon range. The road up the eastern side of the range, after a blown-up bridge had been repaired, was good. It was, however, very steep and winding for several miles, the descent to the coast, involving numerous sharp turns, was even more dangerous, in some cases being too much for the brakes of the motor ambulances. Chapter 4 Section 12, Spanish Flu and Malaria During the pursuit, the Desert Mounted Corps had travelled around the malarial shores of the Sea of Galilee and fought on the malarial banks of the Jordan between Gisad Benet Yacoub and Lake Halle. Within a few days of operations in Damascus area finishing, malaria and pneumonic influenza, then sweeping through the Near East, spread quickly infecting the regiments. The epidemic spread quickly, assuming startling proportions in Damascus, along the lines of communication south of the city, and also to the north. Virtually all sick in the early stages were serious cases. Medical supplies quickly became short, while supplies of suitable food for a light diet were inadequate and blankets and mattresses ran short as there were no facilities to disinfect them so they had to be destroyed in many instances. The Australian Medical Corps, commanded by Colonel Rupert Downs, became responsible for the care of the sick in Damascus. Major W. Evans, the Dadens of the Australian Mounted Division, was appointed Principal Medical Officer of Damascus and became responsible for reorganizing the hospital system. Cases of malignant malaria contracted in the Jordan Valley south of Gisa Ed Damier before the offensive, were increased by those contracted in the Jordan Valley north of Gisa Ed Damier, and around Basin. In the week ending 5 October more than 1,246 troopers of the Desert Mounted Corps had reported sick to hospital, and another 3,109 cases were reported the following week. Many who had contracted previously suffered malaria in the Jordan Valley were now in a different climate, tired and worn out from two weeks of almost constant operations, and their relapsed and or contracted Spanish flu, the worldwide influenza epidemic Downs describes the situation as follows. During the first week in Damascus a very heavy outbreak of serious febrile disease occurred. The exact nature of this was not at the time clear, and has indeed in some measure remained a matter of debate. Damascus was then in the grip of pneumonic influenza, and was suspected, in some cases not without cause, of dysentery, typhus, cholera, phlebotomus and other fevers. In the circumstances that existed, it may well be believed that close clinical observation was not easy. Most of the pyrexia was called influenza, dysentery, or even cholera. An outbreak of cerebrospinal fever was suspected. The arrival of the malaria diagnosis station on October 12th in some measure cleared up the situation. All the supposed cholera and cerebral cases, and a large proportion of those of dysentery, were found malarial. Of the cases diagnosed as influenza and whose blood was examined, a large proportion were found to harbor the malarial parasite, and were presumed to be cases of this same disease. It is therefore clear that, simultaneously with an outbreak of pneumonic influenza, a huge rise took place at this moment in the incidence of malignant malaria both in the Desert Mounted Corps and also in Chater's force. Due to a breakdown in evacuations on 10 October, the only divisional receiving station in Damascus, the 5th Cavalry Division receiving station, had on the 11th of October between 800 and 900 seriously ill patients mostly suffering from bronchopneumonia and malignant malaria. There were many deaths and some cases of malarial diarrhea were diagnosed as cholera. 
The malarial diagnosis station arrived the next day. The staff was exhausted and severely reduced, medical supplies and blankets ran low. 100 Australian light horsemen were reassigned to medical orderly duties, a large convoy of sick was evacuated by motor lorries the next day and the arrival of supplies of milk relieved the situation. The Australian Mounted Division Receiving Station also arrived and relieved the 5th Cavalry Division Receiving Station which had admitted 1,560 British and Australian sick out of a total of 3,150 admitted to all the medical units that week. At Babtuma Hospital the Ottoman sick rose from 900 to 2,000. Sick prisoners of war were retained in Damascus due to lack of accommodation in Egypt. Medical service personnel became ill at a higher rate than cases from the combat units and no reinforcements were arriving. The loss of administrative officers was crippling. The 4th Cavalry Division receiving station was unable to move for eight days owing to illness, only two motor ambulances had drivers. Many doctors became ill during the period including core staff members. This included the DDMS, Colonel Rupert Downs. Of the 99 medical officers in the three mounted divisions of the Desert Mounted Corps, 23 were sick and the DDMS of the Corps was ill from 6 October, DMs, Eve had no officer available to replace him. He, along with the ADMS and Dadden's Australian Mounted Division, did what they could from their beds, the ADMS 5th Cavalry Division remained well but was with his division advancing towards Aleppo. By the 14th of October the position in Damascus was quickly becoming normal and by the 16th of October the evacuation chain was considered to be working satisfactorily. The DMs, Yves Ramey following a visit by his ADMS on the 11th of October to Damascus ordered 100 RAMC privates who had been on their way to France as infantrymen to return to Damascus on the 18th of October. This would be followed the next day by 18 cars of the Motor Ambulance Convoy and the 25th Casualty Clearing Station took over the Australian Mounted Division receiving station cases. The Desert Mounted Corps handed over administration of the sick in Damascus to the Lines of Communication Headquarters early in November, after the fighting with the Ottoman Empire had finished. But three weeks after Damascus was occupied Allenby reported to the War Office outlining his evacuation plans. He reported that he had initially planned to evacuate thousands of troops to Malta, but evacuations from Salonika had reduced Malta's spare capacity. He also outlined that the health of the Ottoman prisoners was improving and that pending transport, they would be evacuated to Egypt. Dot of the total of 330,000 members of the Australian Imperial Force which left Australia during the four years of war, 58,961 died. 166,811 had been wounded and 87,865 were sick. More cases of malaria, were suffered following the advance to Damascus than has ever been suffered by Australian forces. Chapter 4 Section 12 Subsection 2 12th Light Horse Regiment The men of the 12th Light Horse Regiment were reported in the War Diary of the 8th of October, to be far from well and require a good rest otherwise the ranks will be greatly depleted. By the 12th of October the number of sick was increasing and two days later, the regiment reported that the troops were still having a bad time with fever. Fifty prisoners daily, employed to look after horses and clean up the lines so that sufficient men, be made available to furnish the usual posts. By the 17th of October, the regiment was under strength by one officer and 144 other ranks. Eight reinforcements arrived the next day and by the 19th of October the worst was over, after which it was reported that the situation began to improve with the passing of each day. Chapter 4 Section 13, State of the Horses Those horses which had been in the field, even with like condition, survived the long marches carrying about twenty stone and rapidly picked up afterwards while those which had recently arrived did not do so well. During the Battle of Megiddo and capture of Damascus, from 15 September to 5 October, 1,021 horses were killed in action, died or were destroyed. Out of a total of 25,618 horses involved in the campaigns, 3,245 were admitted to veterinary hospitals and mobile veterinary sections. 
they mainly suffered galls, debility, fever and colic or diarrhea. After they were treated 904 were returned to service. Chapter 4 Section 14, Impact of Sickness on EF Effectiveness The losses to the two infantry corps were high but these divisions, being mainly located back in malaria-free areas near to railheads and hospitals, were not required for military operations, except for the 7th Division which advanced to occupy Beirut and Tiberias. The losses to desert mounted corps were alarming because any further advance would be heavily dependent on its ability to fight. The numbers of sick due to malaria, mainly malignant malaria, doubled from 1 September to the 1st of October, from 2.85 to 5.51 percent, with Indian and European soldiers being almost equally affected. Desert Mounted Corps sick for the week ending the 5th of October of 1246 rose to 3109 for the week ending the 12th of October. Although the death rate was not high, four times as many deaths occurred at Damascus as were killed between 19 September and the 1st of October. Of the 479 deaths in hospital during October and November less than 20 were from wounds. Chapter 5 Aftermath. The capture of Damascus was a victory so influential that it made future major battles in the theatre unlikely, despite the ongoing nature of the conflict. According to Cyril Falls, nothing but distance itself could separate the Eve for long from the mountain masses of Taurus and Amanus. Falls states that by this stage of the war, the Allies believed the Ottoman Empire's resources were nearly exhausted and although economic dislocation as a result of the war led to famines across Lebanon and Syria in 1918, the situation remained uncertain. Further, the Ottoman Empire's ability to replace the lost armies was also unknown. The advance along the Mediterranean coast by the 7th Division occupied Beirut on 7 October and Tripoli on 13 October when two important ports were captured, from which support for the inland pursuit northwards could be provided. This inland pursuit by the 5th Cavalry Division reached Baalbek on 10 October, Homs three days later where they received orders to advance to Aleppo 120 miles away, on 20 October. They rode out without the 4th Cavalry Division, but with support from the Sherifian Army and the 2nd, 11th and 12th Light Armoured Motor Batteries and the 1st, 2nd and 7th Light Car Patrols. Aleppo was captured by Prince Faisal's Sherifian Army with support from the Armoured Cars and the 15th Cavalry Brigade on 25 October. The following day, the 15th Cavalry Brigade were attacking strong rearguards at Harriton, 8 miles northwest of Aleppo, and on 27 October, the Australian Mounted Division was ordered to move north in support of the 5th Cavalry Division. A cemetery for the British and Commonwealth casualties of World War I and World War II is located near Meza.